Welcome back, everyone, to The Xamarin Show. I'm your host, James Montemagno, and I'm so excited. All the way from Australia, my good, good friend and fan and friend of the show, Matthew Robbins, is with me. How's it going, Matthew? Good, good, James. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. I mean, you made the journey all the way from Australia, enjoying beautiful, sunshiny Seattle, I'm sure. Yeah, it was a bit of a, a bit of a temperature drop, but that's all right. <laughs> it's about like uh, 80, 90 Fahrenheit, I assume, and in... uh, Over 100. Over 100. Hot. Yeah. It was very, very warm. Yeah, so it's nice and a balmy 30, 40 degrees here. Yes. But, uh, I don't think it rained too much. Uh, just a little bit, but little bit. I'm from Melbourne, so I'm used to it. Okay, perfect. Yep. Beautiful. Uh, so today I'm super excited um, uh, just to have you on. You've been working on some amazing tooling for Xamarin Studio and hopefully soon Visual Studio for Mac. And once I saw it and I installed it and I played around with you, I'm like, I got to have you on the show. But I knew you were in Australia and you're like, yep. Psh, I'll fly over, no big deal. So you made it. I'm happy. Yeah. Um, well, any excuse to travel, really. That's true. And Australians, yeah. what we know, Australians, I love to travel. Everywhere I go, I love to travel, too. I'm always running into Australians all the time. Yeah. It's a thing. I don't know what it is. I just love, love life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so first off, um, tell people a little bit about yourself and, and what you're going to show today. Yeah. Um, so my name is Matthew Robbins. I'm a Xamarin and Microsoft MVP. And I've been working in the Xamarin space for roughly four or five years now. Uh, over the course of this time, I've built many, many apps, so from Xamarin Native to Xamarin Forms. And roughly two years ago, I decided to start building tooling for Xamarin. I wanted to fix some workflow problems that I had. Um, it originally just started out as an idea that I would be able to right-click on a layout in Android, and I could pull in all the controls and generate all the C Sharp. So that was the original idea. Yeah. Still haven't done it, <laughs> but I've done an awful lot since then. Um, mostly centered around Xamarin Forms and just trying to improve the way we build apps. Yeah, I really love the idea, uh, Frank, uh, Frank on our podcast, Merge Conflict, we did an entire episode on IDE extensions and kind of how, how cool is it that you can take these crazy IDEs that like developers spent tons and tons of times on, but then we can really craft tools that we care about for our workflow. Yep. And then you start to realize that, oh, it's not just us, right? Everyone else also wants these things, these little missing pieces that are kind of like these corner cases at first, yep. and then sort of turn into, but what if it did this? What if it did this? What if, and like That's how I started with templates originally. I was like, man, I like our templates, but I don't love our templates, so what if I made my own templates? And I think uh, it, it's so cool that, that we have this ability to do it, and not a lot of developers know how to do it, but I work mostly with Visual Studio extensions, but yep. you did Xamarin Studio extensions, is that yes. correct? Yeah, and how was that journey? Uh, a very, very steep learning curve, to, mm -hmm. to be perfectly honest. The, the actual extension model is not very well documented, mm -hmm. so you end up reading and understanding the source code very well. I feel like I'm so much better as a developer <laughs> just because I've had to like, tear apart um, MonoDevelop to actually get anything to work. Yeah. Um, so it's difficult, but it's really, really rewarding. Yeah, I like that. So that's about the story that I've heard a few times. But, ni but the nice thing is that Xamarin Studio is open source, yep. right? Via Mono Develop, which which is from that list long lineage of open source. So, did you just go to the the GitHub page or wherever it was hosted and you just dive through the source code, or did you find some other sample projects out um, there? So my introduction to this was like I, I started off in the Mono Develop source code, just yeah. like poking around. Um, there's a a sample where you just um, you, where you generate a, a date time into your source code. Mm -hmm. So I started off with that and just got an idea of how it all worked. Um, then I reached out to Michaela Hutchinson, mm -hmm. who is one of the product managers at Xamarin, mm -hmm. and I said, I want to do this stuff. Yeah. And she's, she kind of pointed me down the right track. Uh, and it just escalated from there. And so. it, yeah, and it turned into what you're going to be showing today, which it did. is correct. It's called M Fracture. That's correct. Yes, which comes from? So it's a mashup of the word mono and refactor. Okay. So back in the day, about two years ago, I was struggling for a name, and I'm just like, oh, what about if I just mangle these two words and see what happens? Beautiful. Yep. So, so what is M Fracture essentially? Is uh, in a nutshell, what's your 30 second elevator pitch of it? In a nutshell, it's a collection of incredible tools for Xamarin Studio. So, it currently focuses on forms development. So it adds Xaml analysis, navigation shortcuts, refactoring, code generation, a whole slew of very very useful tools. Okay. Yeah, and then do you do anything that's not Xamarin Forms, like some iOS or Android stuff? In I do do some Android stuff. Okay. So my original focus was on Android, mm -hmm. but I pivoted into Forms because that's what I've been working in for the last year and a half. Yeah. So it adds uh, resource analysis, uh, resource IntelliSense, 
um, some navigation improvements. There's, oh, cool. a, there's a few bits and pieces there. Yeah, because I feel like we've d they did the, the IDEs themselves have done a really good job with Roslyn supporting doing the anal analyzing of it. But when it came to XAML analysis, yep. it, even in general, even when I did Windows development, the XAML analysis was good, but not always w exactly what I wanted. You know, to say no one was doing like a code gen really from I know that's that's out there. And those are kind of those cool extension points. Um, so I'm super excited to see what you have. Do you just want to jump into it? Um, sure. Yeah. 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 Where, where do I even get it from? Oh, this is the, the logo. Yes, yeah, so this nice is the, the logo. Yeah. Um, to get it, you go to www.mfractor, um, M-F-R-A-C-T-O-R. And we'll put it in the show com. notes below. Yep. Um, you can either press the big blue download now button. Nice and easy. Yep. And that'll take you to it. And then just click on the download mfractor link. Okay. And that'll, that'll download it for you. So this is an MPAC file, and that's the... That's the ex extension format for a, um, a modern develop okay. add-in, or a Visual, Visual Studio for Mac add-in now, actually. Okay, gotcha, yeah. So, so if you're probably used to Visual Studio, they have the VizX, VSIX, yeah. very similar, essentially. This is the, the pack. Yeah, it's and basically you know. like a bundle with some like manifest information. Okay. So once you have it, then what do you do? Um, then we can jump on over to Infractor's documentation website. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can either click on the docs.mfractor.com link, uh, or we can enter it manually. Okay. Uh, but there's instructions here for setting up and installing it. So we can go in and learn how to get it, learn how to install it. So currently you have to install manually, okay. um, which would involve, uh, if we go into Xamarin Studio, we go to the, the top menu, so the Xamarin Studio menu, um, then click Add-ins, and then there's Install from File. Yeah. And then you would just browse to wherever the MPAC is. Got and it. And it would just install. Got it. And if people may have never even seen this dialog before, this is kind of, so the, there's this extension manager um, that's on there, and then there's a lot of stuff in there already. So I know there that, is, like, yeah. John Dick has uh, my favorite, he has like an obliterate um, folder extension. That yeah. That deletes I mean, all your bin and ob. So, so normally, if you want to, you could have it come up in here, or just literally, if you're developing one, you just install from file, and it's yeah. the same. So if you want to, like, if you're developing one, you want to test it, you mm -hmm. make the impact yourself, and then install it like a user would. And it's a great way of just of testing it. Very cool. Um, once it's installed, it will add its re its repository for you. Oh, cool. Um, and that would just comes in as part of the updating system, so you'll get free updates. Oh, so I don't have to. Once I install it once, I don't have to worry about it again. Yeah, it'll. It uh, Xamarin Studio daily polls okay. the remote endpoints. Nice. Um, so it just checks for an update each day. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, Fine. and then it, it'll just work. Then it's installed. Do I got to close Xamarin Studio? Got to do anything like that? Or you shouldn't need to. Like, okay. I, I I have seen it work without restarting Xamarin Studio, but I would recommend restarting Xamarin Studio. Yeah. Um, just because it's best practice, right? Yeah. So uh, even in Visual Studio and Xamarin Studio, I always shut it down, reopen, because you know there's a lot of things happening over there. But you already have it installed. I do. And and what are you going to show us here today? What is this? I see uh, some. Some PCI Mo stuff. Yeah, and mostly some... we'll go through the, the four key areas that okay. it focuses on. So that's uh, navigation, uh, code analysis, code generation, and refactoring. Okay, let's um, do it. Yeah, so we, we're just going to work with the XAML document and just going to walk you through um, the, the workflow improvements. Okay. Cool. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. So right. I see some XAML. I like XAML. Yep. I'm a big XAML fan. Yeah. And uh, content page. I'm in. Cool. So the immediate thing that you'll notice here is we have this little young yellow squiggle here. Mm -hmm. um, so when Mfractor uh, detects that a XAML document loads up, it injects its analyzer. Okay. Uh, what this does is it inspects your your document for a whole range of issues, and there's a full list of them uh, up, up here actually. So we can go to our, the documentation website and then the analyzers uh, menu, and here it has a full list of what Mfractor checks for. Oh wow, cool. So there's currently 46 different checks, um, and that grows as I encounter them. Got it. So I guess the, the summary of this is every time I get stung by something, um, an Mfractor user will benefit from my pain. Got so, it. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so what this is, this is doing here is it's the namespace analyzer is checking for namespace usages, hmm. um, and it's going through your document, analyzing or inspecting for usages of the local namespace, uh, and then annotating the top point. So this is very similar to probably like the using statement analyzer yeah. that, that you developers are used to, where you know you bring in a new document it has like eighteen thousand different using statements, yeah. but you only use two of them. 
So you just right click and say remove or add stuff in and you can reorganize and things like that. Yeah, so it really, it it really makes things much, much easier to work yes. with. You don't want to load up extra namespaces yeah. if you don't have to, right? Yeah, like it, it's yeah. bloat to your, your document. You don't need it. Got it. Um, next thing, uh, it would be uh, the navigation. So okay. one of the first things that I added was tooltips. Um, so if you want to view more information about anything in the XAML document, you can simply hover over any element, and it pulls out the .NET style tooltip uh, with the class information, the documentation, uh, and it also tells you that you can command D to go to declaration, um, or we can right click and do go to XAML symbol. Oh, cool. And so that jumps you to the, the corresponding symbol. Very nice. And that's really useful for just jumping around and yeah. like, just like navigating more effectively. Well, and just if you want to see what that property means or what it does, yeah. Because as you're typing it, I think some does anything pop up when you type it when you just type in content page. Uh, I don't believe it does. So if you go into label, well, actually, no, it does. You get a little bit, right? But yeah. you don't get the full thing. So if you do a, a content view or even that label, you can hover over anything. Yeah. So if I hover it, hover it over the label, it yeah. it renders out the full inheritance chain. Got it. The summary. It says that you can jump to the declaration as well. Yeah. Very cool. Um, additionally, there's a few other pieces of information that can be injected into tooltips. So if I added an, an image, for instance, mm -hmm. and I put connected the source up, and I put it to, I think it's icon.png. Yeah. Oh, cool. So interactive behind the scenes will inspect through your and your linked Android and iOS projects. Mm. And provided it can resolve the image name, um, it'll pull out that image and render it into a tooltip. And that's really useful for actually seeing what you're working with. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I know there's a lot of times, I actually don't know if an image ref, like resource. Did I name it correctly yeah. in there? Yeah. Often I have so many, right, in so many different folders. Yeah. Like, oh, did I name it correctly? Did it, is it actually in there? Yeah. yeah that's nice. Um, and one, one last thing is if you did a color, for instance, we can hover over the color link and it will render the color in as well. Oh, very nice. So that, that, that's just a few of the tooltip improvements. Yeah. Um, another like navigation improvement that I've really worked hard to improve. So in Xamarin Forms, you end up cycling between your view model, your code behind, and your yeah. view a lot, and it's a big time sink. Um, so one of the tooling improvements is the ability to cycle through those three core, fl core files. Got um, it. Easily. Like a REPL for your code. <laughs> yeah. Almost, yeah. Yeah. So if you if you right click, you can jump between um, the code behind and the view. Okay. So we can just click on that, and it will jump into the code behind. Of course, it's not going to work. Is there code behind? There is. Ah, uh, this one. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. And Rosalind needed to to collect the information. Got it. Um, so we can ju quickly jump backwards and forwards between our two core, core classes. Um, we can also uh, do this with it for our view model. So I'll quickly generate some code generation capabilities. So if we right click um, just anywhere in the page, anywhere in the page. Um, we can select mm -hmm. uh, implement view model. And so that will take uh, the naming convention for that page. So because it's called Hello Mfractor Page, um, it considers the page to be a, a view. Yeah. Um, so it'll drop the page off the end. Uh, use the Hello Infractor and then append a view model Got it. when it's built in the view model. And so that's just a really quick way of building a, a view model for your page. Yeah, I like that. So like usually when I go in, I right click, add a page, add a page, add a page, and I scaffold my pages and then I literally go, add new C-sharp file, add new C-sharp file, yeah. and then I have to rename them all and make sure that they're matching because I'm a stickler for names, right? But this yeah. one just does it for you automatically. What does this property change I implement property? Oh, change? so because I've got um, mm -hmm. Fody's property weaving oh, okay. um, installed, I don't know, uh, what, what is Fody property weaving? Uh, so it'll inject the I notify property changed event hmm. in, into your code for you. So you would uh. derive from uh, I notify property change. Property change. We've all done, yeah, done this. Or I have, yeah. a, I have an MVVM helper class that does this type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so rather than you know doing all doing all this work. Fody will weave that in for you when, okay. you when you have this attribute on the root class. So now, is that class. something that you include in mfractor or is that a separate download? It, it, it's a detection. So oh, okay, got it. 
when you have oh. Fody included, got it. Um, it will inject that for you. Oh, very nice. O otherwise, yeah. it would just strip. It would just strip out got the it. property change, and you just have a, a vanilla class. Got it. Got it. Yep. That makes sense. Um, but I use pro like Fody because I I dislike all that, Doing it. all that manual work. Yeah. Um, Perfect. Cool. Yeah. So because we've got a view model now and a page and a code behind, um, the MVVM cycling shortcuts are now completely active. Oh. So we could jump from our view model to our view. Mm. So it's a, it's a very, very quick way of just getting around. Or we could jump from our view to our view model. Yeah. And so this solution's fairly small. It's the actual like, cost of finding this stuff is not very hard. Sure. But when you start getting into a bigger app, so for instance, at my main job, we have an app with like 50, 60 pages, a yeah. whole bunch of different controls. We mm -hmm. do view models for view cells. It's, it gets out of hand really quickly. Yeah. So provided you've named things consistently, Infractor lets you cycle between those files and find things really quickly. Now, is the page attribute in the view model, view model's pretty much, what if someone did like uh, view at the end instead of page? Are there a few different hot yeah. keywords? So the, the two main keywords is page and view. Okay, got it. Um, so if you have view, page, it'll work. Um, so if we, we can jump back into there, and because we've got a view model now, uh, we can start building out some yeah. some properties. Yeah, I like that. So easiest way to do that is we, if we just take out that hello infractor, um, we can make a binding. And if you don't know about data binding, I'll put some, some links in the show notes to my episode yeah. that I talked all about what this binding message means, essentially. Yeah. yeah. So like what we're saying here is we're connecting the text property on the label to a message property on our on our view model. Yeah. Historically, th you would not know that this was this was a, a potential issue just at the moment. So that message property does not exist on your view model just yet. Now, does it know about my view model? Yeah. So it's inferred by oh, the naming conventions what, what your intended use got is. Because you could also put a binding context inside of this. Yeah. Too. Yeah. So I um, mean, we could we could manually specify the binding context. Got it. And then they would use the binding context instead of the inference, I guess. Okay. Yeah, and then and Fractor would, would honor this one rather. Got it. So if I use the local namespace, this that oh, detection will, will disappear. Um, we can add a view model locator. And we can link it up. There's actually a good opportunity to generate the code gen like to demonstrate oh. the code generation. Um, again, Mfractor evaluates expressions. Yeah. Um, and it will analyze to see if classes exist in assemblies and namespaces. And we can generate that entire class with the property. Oh, cool. Um, so that takes out a lot of work. Yeah. Um, like otherwise, we'd be making that file through a right click and then adding it and coding everything out ourselves. Um, but we'll just link this up manually. Got it. OK. So it'll just create some new yeah, yeah. view models for it. And yeah. view model locator is like a nice way of statically saying that for my, I used, did this a lot with MVVM Lite back in the day with Laurent, uh, essentially is, is saying like, hey, this is a static class, this page belongs to this thing, yeah. I don't want it to create new ones, just go create one new whenever I call it, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. So this is just a... Yeah. It's like design time almost. Yeah, yeah. convenience pattern. Yeah. Um, and then boom, it, it goes away, it knows that you used everything. Yeah, hmm. and because we can, because it analyzes expressions and it, it consumes them, um, we can actually hover over that that expression, oh. and it will pull out the information and give us uh, the ability to also jump to it. Very cool. So we could click on that and jump to. Nice. So that's another time saver. Yeah. Because the the other other way would be we'd have to you know, find it, find find it. my view model, yeah. And and we've got yeah. all these like collisions in here. It's a it's it's a mess. Like it's, yeah. it's hard to find things. Yeah. Um, but back to the binding. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now that I've totally sidetracked us. Small yeah. segue, but it's, yep. you know, it's a good, good one. Um, so Mfractor does implicit resolution. So okay. if we didn't specify the binding context, um, it would, in the same way that for the navigation, it considers the view model and the page related because of the hello Mfractor mm -hmm. um, component, it does the same thing for analysis. Gotcha. So if you've named things similarly, uh, it, it assumes a default binding context and enables analysis for all bindings. Hmm. Um, so in this case, it's consumed the binding expression, and it's inspecting for a message property on our view model. Got it. And it doesn't exist. Yeah. It tells it. It does not, does not find it. Yeah. No bueno. So this is really useful, because otherwise when we run it, 
um, we actually don't know about this error until runtime. Yeah. So we'd have to start our app up, wait for the compilation, wait for the simulator to boot or to deploy to the phone, navigate through the pages, and then eventually with the binding expression, it's not even going to work. It won't even yeah. crash. Yeah, it'll so, it's just one. Nothing will happen. Yeah. So yeah, we, we. I find often that you have compile time XAML. So if you spell binding incorrect, let's say it, it'll it'll tell you that yeah. at, at error time, but it, it's not inspecting your view model. It doesn't know that link. Yeah. And, and then the binding is null. So it's just like I don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. This but, way, it adds some smarts to it. And, yeah. And it just takes out the potential for runtime issues. I've seen this time and time again on my on my GitHub where I see like uh, issues come up. And then they'll be resolved like by the, by the creator like an hour later. Like, oh, I mistyped something. <laughs> you yeah. know, type of thing. Totally happens. I've I've been there. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. So. so so part of this is like I just I, I hate getting stung by things yeah. at runtime, and I just yeah. I'd like to like Im improve how we work. So this is like the whole whole point of this. Cool. Um, and so you see that we've got a little little yellow squiggle beneath it. So there's two different types of squiggles. You've got a, a red one, mm -hmm. which is it's an issue, but I, yeah. can't, I can't actually do anything about it. Just want to let you know that it's something's going to break. Got it. Um, and yellow squiggles in, in Mfractor are, there's an issue, um, but I can do something about that. Got so it. I can fix it. Um, and the way to fix it is to just click on the span that's uh, yellow squiggled. So I can just click on that, right click on that. Okay. Um, and then go to fix. And I can either make a property name message. Um, so that would be a, a vanilla property with a a getter and setter, and that's it. Yep. Um, or I can make it with a backing field if you would like some some logic to go in behind it. Sure. So I'll just make a property, and it will open up the view model with an insertion mm. point, and you just press enter. Cool. Um, and then Fractal will resolve the type information for you. So it's a string because the mess. It's a string because the the text is a string. It'll yep. it'll pull it that knows. out and, yeah. and insert it in. So if you did one for the text color, it would do a binding to the color, right? It's yeah. Like, oh, this is the color. It knows what it knows what the type is. It's smart. It's not just going to be an object. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's actually a good opportunity to demonstrate some refactoring. So All right, I'm ready. Let's do it. If we did want to bind the text color to something, and we wanted to preserve the aqua value, mm -hmm. we have two ways of doing that. We could either click on that, and then write out the binding expression, so on and so forth. Yeah. Make, make the property, then wire it up. Yeah. Um, in 2.8, I introduced a extraction to property binding refactoring. Mm. So you can just right click and go refactor. Um, and we can extract it into a property binding. Okay. And we'll just call that uh, text color because we're creative. Yep. And uh, then enter. Oh, cool. Look at that. And then if we jump uh. back to the view, So I've just done an update. This is <laughs> Hot bits, I like yeah. to say. But it's there and it knows it. Yeah, it, it knows it. it. Yeah. Yep. Um, and that's nice because often I'll put in some weird, like I won't just use aqua, I'll use like pound, zero, zero, five, eight, whatever, some color inside of there. Yeah. Where I really should be putting it into my app.xaml. But sometimes I just want to you know, keep that value, and then this yep. will just at least create the backing field for me, uh, which is really nice. Yeah. Does that work with any property, like the image source, or like any, yeah. basically anything that can be bindable, you can yeah. bind it? And anything that, that has a, um, a bindable property component. So there's the, there's, like the, there's the source property, but there's also a source property named property. property. Got which it. is the, the bindable property for the source. Mm. So anything that has a, a bindable property um, correlation, then we use that. Very cool. Well, Very cool. Yeah. Um, all right, so next up, uh, one of the newer features that I did to clean up XAML um, is namespace refactoring. OK, yeah. Um, I'll just restart that with the source editor. Um, so what we can do now is if we want to rename namespaces throughout our document, mm. um, we can just right click on the top declaration and uh, do, for instance, my app. Boom. And it will rename the XML declaration and also the my app declaration. Yeah, it's nice because often I start creating controls and I have like controls, controls, my controls, this sort of thing controls, this, this other control, you know? Yeah. You start bringing a lot of third party libraries that are in there. Yeah, and, cool. and it's so easy to accidentally import things a few times. So, yeah. for instance, if we had 
like the, the CLR namespace, Hello Infractor, and we had it as both local and my app. Mm. Um, it's a duplicate declaration, you don't actually need it. Yeah. Um, and say we, we used it uh, in here as well. So I'll just set the, bind set the binding context in here. Sure. And we set that to local. We have two, de two duplicate declarations that both point to the same thing. Um, there's a new fix in Infract 2.9 um, that lets you compress them all to the same namespace. Oh, nice, nice. So you can just right click and it will rename them all to whatever the, the namespace is that you want. Yeah. <coughs> um, that's just a nice little, nice little touch. Yeah. Essentially. Just like just keeping things clean, yeah. basically. Yeah, and also like it's so easy to overlook those things in your code. Yeah. Because as you're jamming on code and you're just like nonstop code, and you're like, oh, I'm doing this revision, that revision, I'm pulling in this control and that control, and then you copy code from one file to another file. And yep. you're like, oh, you know, you know, now I have all this stuff, but you don't realize it, and then it's just kind of bloat. You know? and, and then eventually, like, it gets out of hand, and it starts looking messy, and it's a pain yeah. to, to maintain. Yeah. Um, on the, the, ma the maintenance note, um, some of the newer features that I've been adding are on the keeping your, your XAML tidy. So, say for instance, you wanted to uh, keep things aligned uh, on separate lines or the same line. Mm -hmm. um, we can now right click on any node. Mm. And you can, for instance, collapse them onto the same line. Cool. Um, or you could expand them all out into separate lines. Ah. And you can do that on like the label, for instance. Yeah. So I'm a I, big fan of, of uh, properties on new lines. Yeah, so if you just wanted to expand oh, them yeah. out into separate lines, it does a, a very, very simple collapse. Yeah. And if, I'll just add some more properties. So like font size. Oop, I'm actually okay. not in anything. <laughs> So if we had like blue uh, automation ID label, um, and you notice how things are, are misaligned at the moment, they're yeah. out of order. Uh, so we can uh, sort them and it mm -hmm. reorders them. So that, that will do it based on namespace um, and then name by alphabetically. Nice. So it just keeps things tidy. I like that. Um, we've also got some redundant white, white space there as well. So if we wanted to, we can actually organize the whole whole document in one hit. And just to, to demonstrate how that works, I'll just kind of put things put things all up, randomly. Put things out of line. Yeah. Um, so that'll use the the same formatting convention to the the split onto separate lines, um, and we can just tidy the whole whole document um. up in one hit. That is beautiful. And it just keeps things clean. Yeah. So I, I've been using this on, on the app at my workplace just to just make things more readable. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Because it's easy to, for things to drift. It is, especially when people open up uh, source code in different IDEs and different spaces versus tabs, and yeah. everyone should just replace tabs with spaces. That's just me. Yeah. But um, hotly debated. Yeah. <laughs> There's going to be all the comments on this episode. It'll be like, tabs. I'm You're starting another tabs. Um, tabs versus spaces flame war. Yes, always. Classic. Yeah. Um, so I guess I'll go into some more code generation. Yeah, so something that I've been using quite a lot uh, is the ability to generate bindable properties. Okay. Um, so I, I have been doing a lot of refactoring and, yeah. and taking XAML um, that's reusable and converting into our own custom controls. Oh, sure. Um, so it's like consider, for instance, that that label was going to be reus reusable throughout the app, yeah. and had some like certain behavior, like it it said did a toast or something when you when you um when you clicked on it. Um, what what we can do is we can make a new control. So I'll, I'll make a new uh, mfractor label. So this part is manual. Oh. So essentially, yeah, if I was creating a new when I create custom controls, I I go in like this is my label, this is my whatever. This is a a bounce button, for instance. I think, and when you click it, it bounces and does some animations. That would yeah. be kind of the idea here, right? Yeah. yeah. And I'm just adding a dot controls. I'll demonstrate something mm -hmm. very shortly. Um, so you notice that this is all misaligned. Mm -hmm. I actually don't like that. So I can pretty simply just format the entire document again. Yeah. Oops, I actually opened it in the wrong one. There we go. There we go. Cool. Um, and I'll add my label, and I'll give that the next name of label. 
All right, so let's get started. And we'll say that I want to uh, replace this label with uh, my label, with the mFractor label. So I, let's make a new controls uh, namespace. Um, and we'll link that to the mFractor label. Um, so something we can do here is we can import controls. This is very, very useful uh, when you're working with an external control library. And you know the name of a control and you want it to you want to make a new namespace for it. Yeah. So you just pull in the the assembly and namespace for you. Got it. So we can just right click on that yellow span and do an import operation. Mm. Um, and then I'll just actually sort it. <laughs> always be sorting. Need a, always, always be sorting. Yeah, need a need a keyboard shortcut for that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So controls, we can import them. Got it. Um, cool. Just makes things very, very easy. So yeah. I, I use FF image loading uh, quite a lot. Yeah. Um, and I'll copy that, copy that, copy that throughout the pages. Um, and rather than having to go and copy the namespace import, I can just do a right click import. Got it. And it saves a lot of time. Got it. Cool. Um, and I'll just expand that out to separate lines. Where are we? Just, you know, I like things, uh, keeping things clean. So you notice here that we've got, now we have two missing properties because mm. our mFractor label, um, that's actually a content view. Okay. Do so, you need to change the class on that at all inside the XAML to the dot controls and namespaces? Uh, Does it know that? Because you the code behind of the, you have the dot controls, right? Yep. This is here? Yep. And then the namespace there is dot controls. Is there inside the XAML? Do you have to change that at all? Uh, I've already done it. Oh, have I? No, I haven't. I have not done it. Yes. Got it. Good catch. Good catch, yeah. Good pair programming. I've done this a few times. Yep. Yep. Um, so, we, so we don't have the, um, the text and text color property. No, we've changed the namespace. No, I have to, <laughs> to re-import it. Yeah. See, that's, and that's actually nifty because you're changing namespaces, yep. and it knows that hey, you changed the namespace, yeah. and you can go re-import. See, so it, it just it just caught a bug for me. Yep, like, see, before I even knew it. All right, and then we just cool. sort it. I, there we go. Okay, beautiful. So we want to make a text and text color property. Yeah. Um, so something like something we can bind to and change the content. Mm -hmm. um, something we can bind to and change the color. Got it. So historically, the way we'd have to do this. Um, I actually don't remember how to do this, so apologies for this, because mm -hmm. I, I haven't done it this way for about five, four or five months now. Yeah. Um, you'd have to go in here, make a bindable property declaration. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know how to do it. Yeah, I'll, it's I'll long. It's it, long. It, I copy and paste from the documentation. Yeah, so it's hard. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the, the things that mFractor adds is the ability to generate bindable properties, mm -hmm. and it will resolve the type converter, like all the, um, all the type information for you as well. Okay. So there's two ways we can do it. We can either right click on the, the spans and do it one by one. So right click, fix. We can either make a property mm. um, or we can make a bindable property. Oh, cool. So if we did the did a bindable property, uh, opens up the insertion point and boom. boom, just does everything for us. Very nice. However, when I'm refactoring, I can have like three to four to five to six, however many yeah. properties at once. You can just keep like essentially when you, let's say you're creating a custom control, you might just expand this and just have a bunch of them. And you're like, yeah. I just want to work on what my control is going to look like, and then I'll figure it out later, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah or like you've taken a, a, um, a control that, that's been bound to, and it's got all these binding expressions, mm -hmm. but you want to make it reusable. Got it. So you end up replacing the, the binding expressions with, with bindable properties. Yeah. And then in your, in your actual um, XAML file where you're using the control, you end up with like seven or eight yeah. properties that don't exist yet. Don't exist yet, yeah. So. The workflow that I'm pushing for now is to just right click and implement the missing members. Mm. So this will uh, gather all the missing properties um, and then implement them all as bindable properties. Boom. So that has saved me. I, I don't even know how much work. But yeah. I, I don't remember how to do this stuff anymore because I haven't been yeah. doing, I haven't done it manually for months. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, auto-generate that, right? Like no need for it. I mean, that's why I used a lot of, like we have code snippets, right, for instance. Yeah. It's like, but yeah, code snippets are so don't have to remember how to do all of this you yeah. know, shenanigans that's well, in there. It's like, yeah. you have to remember to make a, a static property, you have to remember the, the binding, the create yeah, syntax, the yep. do all this. You get to use a lot of these new fancy name of features, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah, do it right. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. So it just saves a lot of time. Yeah. And now because they exist, mFractor 
inspects your XAML again and it Very detects good. that it's all resolved. Very cool. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Yep. Um, I guess there's a few other bits and pieces as well. Yeah. I, I've been adding some code generation for XAML. Um, so I add resource dictionaries fairly frequently. Mm -hmm. So you can right click on the root element and make a dictionary declaration. Um, if we were going to make a value converter, take the, the message and convert it to something else. Yeah. Um, yeah, often inside your resource dictionary, you have an app level and then a page level. So you, you, you start to bring in all of these converters over and over and over again. And yeah. often they have to pair with the namespace because maybe you're using a helper library and, and other, they're elsewhere. Um, and then you got to remember everything, give them keys and all this stuff, right? So. Yeah. Um, so what we can do here is we can generate a key hmm. for the resource. Um, just nice and quick. Yep. Um, and then we can implement it as well. So there's a few different options depending on the naming you've chosen. Um, but in my case, I usually, like, I'll, I'll generate value converters from the source code. So mm -hmm. you can just quickly make, make the converter. Yep. I like that. Um, and then we can just do string is null or empty. Um, that'll take the, the string to a boolean. Yep. Um, and I, I, I have a, a certain gripe with converters. I don't like that they're not type safe. Mm. So there's no way of knowing what goes in and what goes out. Yeah. Without actually cracking open the source code or reading documentation. Sure. So I've been pushing to add uh, a value conversion attribute. So this is based on WPF's uh, convention. So that they already have one of these. Oh, okay. Um, so I've, I've already predefined this in, in my... Um, in my source code. So the basic premise is you define the type that comes in and the type that comes out. Mm -hmm. um, and then you add that to your converter. So pretty easy, just very conversion, conversion type of uh, string and its output type is a Boolean. So this is essentially saying, hey, listen, this converter, what I'm expecting is a string is gonna come in, I'm yep. gonna return, because everything is an object, that's the thing with value conversion. Yeah. Everything's an object, you gotta do all this casting, and which is fine, but but yeah, so this is saying a string's coming in, a bool's coming out, which is actually nice for documentation, but also when team members come in, they're like, what is, I know it's string to bool, so hopefully it's a little, yeah. <laughs> a little bit, but still, when you but, start to get these crazy, this is a speaker to something else, and you're like, what is it even doing? Yeah. Yeah. Like I've got an, an address formatter, for instance. Yeah. Like, or, or a workflow progress, and it's not actually clear on what it's doing. Like, does it expect an, an enum or a string? Like, what's it returning? Is it like a, a color? Is it an object? Yeah. So, um, so what does this give us then? So if we jump back into the XAML, yep. um, there's, there's a few things it, it does. So first of all, we can actually view what the converter's intent is. Mm. So in the tooltip, there's value conversion information now. So the input type and the output type. So that's documented in the XAML for when you're using it. Nice. Which is a big plus. Yep. Um, and if we we're going to apply that to, um, to something, and for instance, we linked it up with a static resource. It also gives us type safety on the conversion flow. Mm. So message is a, is a string. Um, so the, the string to bool converter is expecting a string. So that part works. Um, however, we're returning into a text property, which is also a string. Ah. So if we highlight it over that, it's a string. It's a big like, no-no. Yeah, it's, it's gonna break at runtime, basically. Yep. So what mFractor does is it uses that annotation and it inspects the input type and the output type of the oh, binding. Oh, cool. And then says what the issue is going to be. Yeah, because it knows your binding, it knows your type. And if you change that to something like is enabled or something like that, right, which is a Boolean yeah. a binding, essentially then we're literally taking this Then this it will bool. resolve. Boom, very cool. Yeah. yeah. So it just keeps things simple. Yeah. Well, prevents you from getting stung by this stuff at runtime. Yeah, yeah. 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 So cool. Anything else in that are like uh, you want to show off in the in the XAML editing? I think oh, the, like I the think highlights. the XAML yeah. editing. Like, uh, I've covered a lot. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot in there. We just yeah. cover like we're gonna have like awesome. I'll timestamp all of these too, so you really can jump to all these different points, which is very cool. Yeah. There's it, a, a lot more that I've I haven't even touched, but I yeah. don't think we have time to go over everything. <laughs> yeah. I did want to do one thing before we 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 wrapped up is. Is I'm a big Android person. Yep. It's my favorite platform to develop for. And you showed me before the show some 
small little things that M Fractor will, will do for you. So, and there is the nice thing about Xamarin, even if you're in Xamarin Forms, is sometimes you got to go into the Android project. Yeah, yeah, so you you're do. In there. So, what what little things have you done inside of here? Well, I guess we'll, like we'll start with navigation as, as mm -hmm. well. So, tool, tool tips and go to declaration support for resources. Mm -hmm. So that was something that really pained me. Yeah. Like back when I was working in, in Android. So, you can hover over. Um, ah. Drawables. You can hover over the the resource dot layouts, and instead of rendering the integer ID, it renders out what the file will be. Got it. Um, I see. You can even go go to declaration. So you can. if it was an ID, does it know how to go to the ID? It does know how to go to the ID. Oh my so, goodness. There probably isn't one, but if there was, then, but, well, let's find one. Yeah. Resource dot ID dot. We'll find one here. So you, you can jump to the layout as well. Mm. So that was just the command D that I pressed. Got it. Um, so actually, we'll, oh, sliding tabs. Yeah, let's grab the sli sliding tabs, and, and it will also. Just, it's just a, a mega hack, so it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't give me a warning. Yeah. Oh, there's so, a temp temp below too. Yeah. yeah. So it'll it'll tell you it's an ID. It'll tell you where it's at and the control that it uses. Got it. Um, and then we can also press Control Command D and jump to it because it's the the design editor interferes a little bit. Yeah. Um, but if we're using a string, for instance, it'll just take you straight to the declaration. To the resource. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Which is super nice. Yeah. So that's a, a big time saver. Yeah. Um, next thing is hmm. IntelliSense for all resources. Yeah. Um, so this is for values, for menus, for XML XML configurations, um, drawables. Th there's a lot. Yeah. Um, I think the manifest has tool t has um, tooltips and stuff as well. Yeah. So just makes things little e things easier to work with. Yeah. So if you do like a new string inside of there, will it fill in your like name and yeah all that stuff for you then? Yeah. Oh, and it tells you all the properties inside. Yeah. That's super nice. Yeah. Often I'm just like copying and pasting, copying and pasting, but often it's so hard for me to remember. Is it is it int or is it bool or is it boolean or like what what's yeah. the actual you know especially like string arrays. A lot of devs may not go into that type of. A flow, but like when you get really complex on huge projects, you're like, oh, these little tiny, yeah. tiny little things. And it all adds up. Like you, you, you sink time into it. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Anything else? So right now, how do I, you you get it? You can download it. It's free. It's free. It's free currently. Yeah, free currently. Currently, got it. Um, the expected way things will go. Um, I'll continue supporting Xamarin Studio until the mm -hmm. very end. Yes. Uh, and when Visual Studio for Mac becomes the endorsed product. Yeah, out of preview. Yeah. yeah, I will release for that with a free trial for oh, cool. um, and it will, be a, it will be a paid product as well. Got it. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. So right now, download it, give it a chance, give it a try, get feedback. How do people give feedback on it? So it, two ways. Yeah. Um, there's a Xamarin Slack channel. Okay. Um, and it, beneath that is an Mfractor channel. So cool. if you jump into that, I'll put it in the show notes and just ping at, at Matthew Robbins. Um, I'll say hello and. Welcome you to the channel, and then you can just tell me whatever you want. Got it. Um, but the easier way is to just hit me up. Hit me up over Twitter. Got it. So cool. at Matthew R Dev. Cool. And we'll put uh, Matthew's Twitter account, the Slack channel, how to get M Fractor, all this good stuff in the show notes below. Well, thank you for coming all the way out to beautiful, sunshiny Seattle. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, go download it. Give it a try, especially if you're using Xamarin Studio. Uh, and I'm sure if you want Visual Studio for Mac, just hit them up on the Slack. Uh, but until next time, I'm James Montemagno, and this is The Xamarin Show, and thank you so much for watching.